Alright. I've got an idea to make wireframing in Figma super streamlined. So, let's get to it. Ow! Alright, so here's the problem. Ideally, both the designers and developers would like to spend most of their time on creating beautiful, well-designed websites with a great user experience. But what we spend a lot of our time on is recreating these common block elements for our websites. And so if we can speed up this process somehow, then we can get back to what's really important. Here is something I've prepared earlier. So usually when we're designing websites, these are some of the common blocks that we end up using. Now, as I see it, there's multiple different levels of blocks. And at the bottom level, you have primitive blocks. And these are things like content blocks, image blocks, video blocks, etc. And then the next level up from that, you have general blocks. And the idea is that you can take multiple primitive blocks and combine them together to create general blocks like testimonial blocks and header blocks, etc. And then those general blocks can be taken and put inside of the general layout blocks or the specialized layout blocks to create more complicated website layouts. And so the idea here is that you don't really need that many blocks before you can start combining them together and have a wide range of different blocks to use on your website. Okay, so now that our Figma file is roughly set up, we can start designing individual blocks. So what I'll do is I'll run through the general process for one of the blocks and then most of the other blocks will be the same. So I'll fast forward that section. All right, so let's start off with an image block. And so we'll draw out a square and images are usually three by two. So we'll multiply this by 1.5. And that's our standard image aspect ratio. Let's make our blocks mobile first. So let's map that out on the mobile. Bring that over here. As for the fill, I was thinking that we could do like a light blue fill that won't stand out too much. Now, obviously that's probably going to need a bit of a stroke as well. Now we'll also create like a little image icon for it. Um, now the other thing that I wanted to do was make these responsive so that they easily scale and fit into other components and that they can easily be placed on different device types. So currently when we scale this, it doesn't really scale all that well. So let's see how we can fix that. So if we create a frame around this image, like so, now we start getting some more control over how these elements will resize inside of that frame. So the background, this rectangle, needs to scale in both directions, like so. We can test that out. So that's working as expected. And then this image icon, that needs to be centered in the frame. And so that means now when we scale this frame, that image icon stays nicely put in the middle. So that's all that there is to making primitive blocks. So I'll speed through the other ones and I might stop here and there if there's something interesting. All right, the primitive blocks are now for the most part done. They're all very responsive, and that means we can now start making the next level of blocks using these primitive blocks. 
All right, so just like with the primitive blocks, I'll go through one of the blocks and then I'll fast forward through the rest, stopping at any points that might be interesting. We'll start with an image link block because it should make a lot of use out of the blocks that we've already created. Okay, so we'll grab an image block and create a duplicate here. And we'll grab this content block and create a duplicate over here. Now looking at this content block, we might need to make some modifications and possibly create a new primitive block, but we'll see how we go. So the basic structure of creating the image link block was really easy. However, as you can see, the content block doesn't quite fit the structure that we need. So I'm going to make a small modification and create a new primitive block out of it. So I've quickly created a new primitive block that has a smaller heading that'll hopefully be helpful for more of our general blocks. And now we can create a copy of this block Paste it over here. There we go. And now we can go grab this button as well. All right, so as you can see, we've created our link block out of our three primitive components. Now the last thing that we need to do is make sure that it's responsive so that we can easily use it across multiple devices. Because as you can see at the moment when we scale it, there's something funky happening with this button over here. So to do that, we're going to create and uh, make a component. Create a component. We'll call it our image link block. Then we'll make sure that the text isn't overlapping this button. And we'll just scale that up here. And then what we can do is we can set the constraints to top and bottom and that keeps the uh, distance from the top and the bottom of the frame constant. So as we now scale this component, you'll see that the text nicely cuts off just before it touches the button. The next thing is we don't want this button scaling like this. So if we click on this button and we select bottom, then when we scale this component, you'll see that the button no longer scales weirdly. So that's our image link block complete and now I'll speed through the rest of the blocks and I'll stop if there's anything interesting. All right, so one thing that I've noticed myself doing a lot is adjusting the padding on all of my blocks. And I was thinking because Figma allows you to compose components inside one another and then swap them out whenever you want, we could create a padding component that we can put the content inside of. And this could be a padding component for mobile, desktop, and tablet use. And then if ever we want to adjust the padding on anything, all we'd have to do is go adjust these three padding components rather than adjust all of these blocks individually. So let's give that a shot. All right, let's try create a new component to test this idea out. So if we create a frame, like so, and then inside that frame, we can create a rectangle. All right, so what we're gonna do is create a component out of this and we'll call this content. 
And now we can just adjust the padding to this to match our designs. Great. And then we'll set this to left and right, and top and bottom. So we can create a new component out of this now. Create a component. We'll rename this component to padding regular. And then the other thing that we're going to want to do is remove the background. So then you have the padding, but no background fill. Let's create a duplicate of this now. And let's just try replace this uh, content rectangle with something else. So let's go to our primitive blocks and replace this with a content block like that. So at the moment it's a bit too big, but as you can see, now our content block has perfect padding, just as we want. And then we can create multiple versions of these blocks, like so. And then all we'd have to do is go adjust the padding in here and all of the padding for all of the blocks would adjust nicely. All right, so I finished creating the padding blocks and so I've created a quick test here to show you how they're working. As you can see, they're all responsive and you can put any kind of primitive block in them and they all respond nicely like this. And then the nice thing is, if we ever decide that we want to change the padding, all we need to go do is actually change the original padding component and all of the blocks using this padding will update nicely. How cool is that? All right, so all of our blocks are using the padding components now. And so what that means is we can go in and change the padding and you'll see that the padding for all of the blocks now update just like that. All right, so there's a few final blocks that I'd like to add. So I'll quickly do those and then we can finish up with the layer blocks. It's finally almost done. All right, so most of the blocks are done now. So we can probably move on to doing the layout blocks and see how all of this can start fitting together. All right, so just like how we created the padding components, I think for the layout blocks, we can create gutter components, which set a particular gutter. This means at any point, we can easily adjust that gutter if we decide to do so. All right, so to do that, I'm just going to create a duplicate of the padding blocks because they're going to be relatively similar. So the main difference is that the gutter blocks will have a lot less space than the padding blocks. Alright, so now we can create components. We'll just rename these. Alright, so you can see what these are going to look like if we line them up. So that's the spacing between those blocks, between those, and between those. And so if we decide that we want less or more spacing, all that we need to do is go and change them in here. That's pretty neat. All right, so the layout blocks are going to be relatively simple. We're just going to need a few grids and some column layouts. So let's quickly do that. All right, so the layout blocks are now done and now we can finally start bringing everything together and see how it's all going to work. So I thought I'd create two examples showing how these blocks can now all be used together to create really unique and complex wireframes. So the first block that I'm going to show is an image text block where you have an image on one side and text and a potential call to action button as well. All right, so for the image text block, what we're going to want to start off with is a two column layout. So let's drag that over to our desktop screen, position it, like so, something like that. And then it's as simple as just dropping in the content that we want in each block. So in this block, we'll add in the image primitive. And then in this block, well, 
we want a little bit of padding so let's add in a bit of padding first so add in some regular amount of padding and then in this block we want to add our text so that's also a primitive block and there we go we've added our text and as simple as that we have created our image text block and it is fully responsive so the other block that I wanted to create was a testimonial slider block. So if we're creating a slider, we're going to want to drop in our slider, like so. Let's position that nice and wide. And then we want to show three testimonials at a time. So let's click here and then drop in our three columns. And that's the layout. We're going to want a three column with a large gutter. Here we go, three column large gutter. Perfect. And then in each one of these columns, we can just drop in a testimonial block, like so. And just like that, we have created a testimonial slider. So as you can see, once this is all set up, you can create really diverse wireframes using this method. And the nice thing is by using a component-based model, it meshes really well with how the developers are going to then take this design and create a live website with it. All right, so that about does it for this video. Obviously, there's a few more things that need to be done and I'd like to add some more blocks. So I might be releasing an update to this once it's all done but I wanted to create a video showing what I was working on and also what a powerful design tool Figma can be. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I've got a few more ideas for future projects, so I'll keep you guys posted. But for now, I'll catch you later. These lights are damn warm.